Oh, sorry, I didn't notice you there. I was just, uh, researching stuff. Welcome to the first episode of The Pack Files, where we talk about creepy events, places, and monsters, and etc. Today, we are going to be talking about something rather odd. And that thing is not really scary or haunted or anything. I decided it would be a cool thing to talk about. Get ready to dive into the depths of Forgotten Disney as we go into one of the most controversial rides there. And will remain one of the most scariest attractions that were ever built there. So get your shoulder harnesses down and restraints. Because we're about to review extraterrestrial alien encounter. In the late 80s to the early 90s, Michael Eisner took his teenage son over to Disney World to see if it's okay. Honestly, his son didn't like it because there was not that many thrill rides. So, of course, Michael Eisner was really as scared to hear about that. Uh -huh. And, you know, you know, teenage kids are totally unreliable to run a theme park, right? Well, sorry, I, I, had to, I had to make that as a joke. Anyways, um... So, Michael Eisner got with this team of Imagineers, and he's like, Hey, how about we bring the most family-friendly, uh, movie as a ride? You know, Alien! Ah! Ah! <laughs> but senior Imagineers, of course, were having heart attacks over that idea, so, of course, they are just like, no. Well, after that, he went to George Lucas, and this was before all those, uh, prequels, so, um, people actually liked him. Anyways, him and George Lucas got together and decided, hey, how about we not make one based off the Alien franchise and just one that has an alien in it? Because, obviously, that's not going to work. Construction began in the early 90s. In 1994, it got a soft release. And the people that tested out the ride were absolutely horrified. But Michael Eisner was not very happy because certain plot points and other things were keeping it back from being truly as scary as it could be. The first problem was that in the pre-show area, the robot was too light-hearted, and that made guests feel like this ride was going to be more funny than how terrifying it was going to be. So we had to change it to have a Tim Curry voice, and for a much darker theme, but I'll get to that once I actually talk about the ride itself. The other problem is that... Um... People were screaming over all the ride lines, so they ended up having to tell them to not scream with the lines. And people didn't know that the alien had wings, so they also had to add that in. Finally, in June 20th, 1995, it opened to the public. Scott, the Magic Kingdom has a whole new land for you to visit. It's the all-new Tomorrowland. Hold on to your seat as Scott gets set for a chilling visit with an extraterrestrial. Fear not, people of the future. We are simply visitors from your past. We are friendly. Hi. And we come looking for scary attractions. We do. Hi, folks. How are you? Good. Uh, listen, have you ever encountered an alien before? Several times. So what happened? That was an interesting conversation. Do I in any way remind you of an alien? Uh, well... Uh, what would you say to it? I'd invite him to dinner. Now, uh, what, what if you turned out to be the dinner? Ooh. <laughs> <That'd be> she <laughs> wouldn't like that at all. Oh, Hi, where are you from? London, England. All right, so you are an alien. <laughs> yes, yes. Have you guys ever been abducted by an alien? I have. You have? Yeah. And how was it? It was crazy. Well, here we are at the terrifying new alien encounter where they're going to be transporting a live alien creature right into the same room with us. Try to contain your enthusiasm. Are you guys scared? No. There's no reason. It's the future. It's science. Let's go. Come on. We've all had our shots. I'll guard the exit. I'm right behind you. I know you're all uh, a little nervous, but I'm uh, sure there's nothing to worry about. No! I mean, it's 
points, you know, it's great, but it's, it's not good. There's something loose in here. It's over there! Oh, sorry, it's over there. going to tell you what happened, but you don't want to miss it because it's not going to miss you. Once you've entered the main waiting area, Excess Tech would be talking to you about its dedication and its partnership with Earth, telling you that they're not doing it simply for profit, but for helping us seize the future. After that, you'd enter the pre-show area, where a robot named Sir, short for System, uh, crap, no, I keep forgetting this, dang it. Uh, I'm sorry, guys, I keep forgetting this thing. Anyways, um, Sir, which is a robot, basically, he is going to be testing out this new teleportation thing they're working on, on a little cute alien named Skippy. In the original story, the robot was a lot nicer, but in this one, he hates this alien, and he basically just wants him to die. The teleportation ends up messing up Skippy because he wanted to get teleported around the other side of the room with another tube. And it failed because it did get him there, but he was severely burned and all messed up. After a while, Tim Curry, <laughs> I'm going to just call him Tim Curry now, he ends up just suspending it while he's reversing him back. And basically, Tim Curry is just kind of an insane, crazy robot now. But I guess he is good at playing roles as evil people. Anyways, now you enter the main testing chamber. The original intent was to teleport one of you into the area of XS. But instead, Clutch, the main CEO at XS, decided that he was going to teleport himself to all of them so he can talk to every single one of them. However, a mistake is made, and an alien from a foreign planet is teleported. The reason why this happens is because Clutch ends up teleporting to another planet, and they believe that one of the other species was one of them, but they end up teleporting him all the way into that room that you're in, which means there's now an alien in the room with you. The scariest part is that the supposedly unbreakable tubes break and now you're stuck in pitch darkness as the alien goes around and eats people now it's not really an animatronic but they use these really high-tech sound speakers to make it sound like they're running around they also made it so um if it gets really close to you you can feel licking you and also feels like it's drooling on you which is pretty freaking scary if you ask me then, after a while, a technician goes in to fix the power. He ends up succeeding, but on his, you can clearly tell on his night fishing camera that he ends up getting completely eaten by this giant alien creature. You can hear a shrill scream of death, and then you can feel blood dripping down your face. The final act consists of him just flying around attacking people, until finally he gets trapped in the tube again and ends up exploding. Now, this is the question everyone asks. Why did it close? Well, first things first, it closed in 2003 and was replaced by Stitch's Great Escape. A really crappy, oh, okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. A really not so decent ride. It's so bad that it ended up just getting closed down last year. Now, I don't think it's anything anymore, but I have to admit, I don't really like that ride that much. And I really don't want to go into detail about it that much. The two reasons why this ride was so scary was because of just how out of place Disney had ever made this. Isn't it so weird that Disney has made a ride like this? It's just so weird. And 
It was just cool, though. But the two reasons why it closed down was for one, the ride was, of course, way too scary. Even though parents clearly didn't read the sign that says, oh, yeah, this may be too scary for kids. But you know what? They could be illiterate. I don't care. And Jeffrey Jones. Jeffrey Jones was, uh, arrested for, uh, being a sex offender. And, you know, Disney's not really into that, so, of course, they didn't want him around anymore. And Stitch's Great Escape was, of course, going to happen anyway, because it was good for a marketing standpoint and for Disney. Basically, it was just an interesting replacement, and it wasn't that good. In my opinion, I didn't really like the replacement, and I've never really been on the ride, but I don't really plan to, because I've heard terrible reviews from it. Anyways, that's it. Uh, extra terrorist reel. Alien encounter. There you have it. Our first episode of the Pack Files. Hopefully you enjoyed it. We put a lot of effort into it to make it as good as possible. Now please, 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 like or subscribe or go into the comment section to type in hashtag shout for shout for me. Make sure to check out my gaming videos. And go into the comment section, type in hashtag shout for more uh, pack files episodes. Just go down in the comment section, type in hashtag pack files to get more. And you can also request episodes of it. So anyways, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. There's more cases to be solved where I'm from.